After this, aware that everything was now finished, and in order that scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. I thirst. How often in our lives have we actually really, really thirsted? There's something very, very powerful in the midst of the agony of the cross, the physical agony. Then comes this physical and also the spiritual thirst. And it's the spiritual thirst, the meaning of that, those words, every word on the cross has powerful meaning that Jesus says, we know what the spiritual, do we really know what the spiritual, the, the physical words mean? I thirst. When we thirst, we yearn for that which gives life. Water is life-giving. The image of water is there throughout the scriptures, and we've seen images of water in these reflections as well. It is the very essence of life. Jesus is crying, I thirst for the essence of life. In scripture, water is an, a symbol of both life and death, but it is of much more. It's the very stuff that gives life to humanity. And what is it that gives life to humanity? In the Old Testament, there are images, the thirst comes in, in other images, like in Amos. Amos says, let justice roll like a river and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, water flowing out enriching so that we may never thirst or need and that what that here we need the talk of justice and righteousness so that the needs of the world are fulfilled in isaiah isaiah speaks i will pour out water on a thirsty land and streams on the dry ground Jesus, as a rabbi on the cross, would have had such images and very much in his mind from Amos and Isaiah embedded within his, in his being. And so when he cries, I thirst, there's much more than just the physical need that is there. Remember that just not long before, um, he had met the Samaritan woman at the well and had that amazing conversation about water. Um, and and he had said to the woman, Samaritan woman at the well, whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And so the thirst that he speaks of there that will be quenched is eternal life that is brought to humanity through him. That, th that cry from Jesus on the cross, I thirst, is therefore an echo to a much deeper than the physical. I thirst for justice. I thirst for righteousness. I thirst for that for make, which, which makes for eternal life. I cry out. I yearn for it. Remember um, in the, on the Mount of Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount, probably the most famous of Jesus' teachings, there when talking to the ordinary people, a transformative message to humanity. One of the key messages there was, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. I thirst. Jesus, in the midst of the agony on the cross, in the utter abandonment um, where all his followers have left him, where the world has turned against him, yet his cry is a thirst for righteousness, a thirst for justice, a thirst for us, a prayer for us, a thirst for eternal life, for humanity. And therefore, if we are to follow this, this journey on the cross, and if we are to be disciples of Jesus, we too 
are called to thirst for justice and righteousness and to thirst for that which makes for eternal life to carry to share in his journey and to be his disciples in that calling. So let us pray. Lord, as you cried, I thirst on the cross, so as we journey with you in this moment, so may our souls and our lives thirst for righteousness and justice and for all that makes for eternal life, in Jesus' name, Amen.